वेलकम विल स्टार्ट विद द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर फॉर गॉची लियांग द फिफ्थ चैप्टर वेर विल टॉक अबाउट द लैंड फॉर्म्स दैट आर फॉर्म्ड बाय द एक्शन ऑफ रनिंग वाटर नाउ इन द लास्ट क्लासेस वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द प्रोसेस ऑफ वेदरिंग एंड इरोजन नाउ इरोजन रिक्वायर्स मूविंग एजेंट्स दीज मूविंग एजेंट्स कैन बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ विंड वाटर स्नो आइस सो ऑल दोज आर मूविंग एजेंट्स of which we will be talking about only water today now why why first we are taking water as one of the major components now water is a component that is present everywhere so be it the areas of coast be it the areas where you have heavy rainfall be it the areas where you have less rainfall in all those areas you would have the presence of water and therefore the land forms that are formed by water are very very important now as we know for an every uh, youth you have a stage of child youthhood and an old age similarly you have the same stages in the life of a river so in the early stages of the river what we call as the youth stage the river is very active and dynamic when it comes to a mature phase it becomes a kind of uh, towards a constancy and finally towards the old age it begins to slow down because it's on the merger with the ocean so we'll understand the river processes or the formation of land forms under three heads that is the youth stage the mature stage and the old stage now coming on to the processes so under the processes we talked about erosion which is one of the major force which accentuates the various moving agents to erode the surfaces so removing of the top surface that is the erosion and moving away with the agents is the basic idea that we would be discussing now this chapter has been divided into various sub chapters where we have discussed the various erosional features depositional features separately so in this class we would be covering all those together and there are links for those which have been discussed separately so you can definitely refer those now why is running water important so you have the whole hydrological cycle that occurs so under the hydrological cycle what happens is by the process of evaporation and transpiration you have the water that goes up forms the cloud and finally these cloud pour down in the form of precipitation commonly this precipitation is as rainfall then you have a snowfall fog dew so all those are various forms of precipitation which we will discuss later so this is a common hydrological cycle that is seen now once you have the hydrological cycle you have the presence of water now this water goes through the various rivers which we also call as streams now some of the streams follow the path of the slope and therefore they are formed as a consequence of the slope and known as the consequent streams however all these streams are joined by certain tributaries these can be either at right angle or at an oblique angle so they can either join ob obliquely or they can join at right angle different rocks produce different types of formation so you have various uh drainage patterns we can say that are formed now these drainage pattern can be dendritic these can be in the form of tree like fashion then you have the radial drainage that is seen in the mountain highlands you have centripetal drainage where you have the drainage that goes down from a common center and so on so all those are various drainage patterns that could be seen and we have the complete list of drainage pattern here we would be mainly focusing on the features and why erosion actually takes place so we would talk about this mechanism under a humid condition so what would happen in the last class we talked about soil creep and landslide as we said soil creep is a slow process however landslide is a sudden process so the land form that would be formed in the case of slow creep would be very different from the land forms that are formed by a landslide that is due to the sudden change in the process now when we talk about how the river process takes place there are three major terms that we must understand let's say i have a beaker and i dissolve salt in it so salt would dissolve completely and therefore it would form a solution 
On the other hand, if I put sand in it, it would settle down towards the bottom and it would be known as suspension. Now, these two terms are clear. There is one another very interesting term that is traction load. Now, what does this word traction load means? Traction load actually means you have some big boulders and big particles on the base of the river. So let's say you have the river flowing in. We are visualizing the depth of the river. So on the bottom floor of the river, you have big boulders. Now what happens is these boulders roll down and they roll across the base and put a load or create a traction on the base of the river and therefore we call it as traction load and these materials which cause the traction load are usually the coarse material. Now different rivers have different capacity as we said and therefore we must understand what would be the idea behind these rivers. So let's say let's be, uh, let's talk about an example from mississippi river so mississippi river actually drains half the size of america in gulf of mexico every time so the amount that is being drained by a mississippi river varies greatly as compared to let's say any other river let's talk about godavari or any other river from india so the amount that is drained by mississippi would vary greatly Therefore, we understand that each river which is flowing through the various stages have different carrying capacity or we can say the stream capacity for these rivers are different and therefore the formations that these rivers make would be different in each case. Now, coming on to the basic idea of erosion, transport, erosion and transportation. So, there are basically four fundamental concepts that we must understand before we proceed to the formation of landforms. Now, these four fundamental concepts start with the first concept that is abrasion. And abrasion is also known as corrosion. So, please remember it's not corrosion, it's A here. So many students get confused. So it's corrosion or abrasion. Now corrosion is different. We'll go to it as we move further. Now abrasion or corrosion, the idea is grinding of the material with the surface. So you have a surface and you have the material here. So this material constantly grinds with the surface and that process is known as abrasion. So finally what happens is the material corrodes and the surface corrodes and that is what is abrasion. The next material is corrosion. So you have a O here and this corrosion is also known as solution. So it's very simple as in the case of limestone caves. So you have calcium carbonate and that calcium carbonate or limestone dissolves with the water to form calcium hydroxide and you have the cast topography that is seen. The next is hydraulic action. Hydraulic action is purely by the action of water and therefore we call it as hydraulic action. The last is very interesting, it's attrition. Now let's come on to the difference between attrition and abrasion. In abrasion, we said that the corrosion, corrosion is taking place between the surface and the particle. However, in attrition, it's the uh, friction or the uh, basically wear and tear that is caused between the two particles themselves. So it has nothing to do with the surface, it's between the particles and therefore we call it as attrition. So basically let's say you have two big boulders, they both wear and tear together and bifurcate or break down into smaller particles and that is what is known as attrition. Now moving on to the course of the river and the various features that are formed. So the most common feature that would be formed is a V-shaped valley. What would happen? You have a river flowing through these two mountains. So when the river is flowing through these two mountains, it would cut the two mountains. So let's say you have a structure like this and the river was flowing here. So this river was basically cutting it and slowly and gradually it was deepening. So the feature that is formed is a V-shaped feature and this feature is known as a V-shaped valley. Now when this V-shaped valley deepens further, we call it as gorge formation. However, in certain cases you have 
canyon that are formed and these canyons are commonly seen in arid topography or in the dry areas so whenever you have a dry area we will say it's the canyon formation and further sometimes you also use canyon as a term to explain a further deeper formation than a v-shaped valley now we have a very interesting example here you have two streams that were running parallel to one another and they were having certain tributaries with them so you have stream a which is running at a higher velocity as compared to stream b what would happen to this stream a this stream would capture this this tributary of stream b so this tributary would merge into the tributary of stream a because stream a it has has a higher velocity or is moving at a faster pace so you would have this section of the stream that would merge into the stream a and therefore this stream which would remain would be this section and this would be known as misfit stream or beheaded stream so some of the terminologies are very important just for the sake of knowing those so make sure you have the brief idea about the terminology so this stream which is left over and the remaining part of the stream is captured by the another stream this remaining stream is known as a beheaded stream or a misfit stream the other part is actually known as the river which is pirating. So this river is pirating and this river has been pirated. So this becomes a pirating stream and this becomes a pirated stream. So that's the difference. So that river basically loses its tributary but this river is gaining. So it's pirating and this is pirated. Again, the point where the river meets the stream A, the, uh, the tributary of B meets the stream A is known as the elbow of capture. So this point is known as elbow of capture. So these are some of the basic fundamental terms to understand how a river is being captured and the process of understanding river capture is really very important. So these are some of the major features when the stream is in its youthful stage when it comes to the mature stage what happens is during the youthful stage the vertical corrosion was very very important corrosion or abrasion as we said was cutting of the particles through the surface so you have the wear and tear between the surface and the particles and that was vertical in nature however when the mature stage starts this vertical corrosion turns around into a lateral corrosion. So now it's no more a vertical undercutting, but it's a lateral corrosion or lateral abrasion that starts in. And finally, this is aided by the process of deposition. Now under this mature stage or the middle stage, we would understand two major concepts. So first is till now you had the deepening of the v-shaped valley that was taking place. Now this deepened valleys are slowly and gradually being interlocked and it forms interlocking spurs. Here you have a diagram that depicts the interlocking spurs and this is a classic characteristic of the youth stage. Now this depends on the flow of the volume that is seen there. The next important concept that's very very important to understand and we will discuss in detail is the formation of meanders. Now let's talk about first what is meanders. The river is moving straight slowly and gradually you have a bank erosion and this river changes the path and you have a small sinuosity that is seen and this is known as sinus uh, a stream on the sinusity index it is usually between 1 to 1.5 however if it is more than 1.5 up to 4 we call this river as a meandering river so this becomes a meandering river i have a skipping rope here to explain this further 
Now you have this skipping rope. You have this as a vertical stream that is running. However, during the course of time, you have turns that are seen. We'll understand in a while how these turns or these uh, bends are formed and the logic behind these. But as and as the bends increases, you have the sinusity that would increase. And as the sinusity increases, you have the meandering that would occur. Now, this is the basic idea of the process of meandering. Now, there were many who argued that it should be followed on the principle of conservation of momentum. So, let's understand for a while what is conservation of momentum and have fun here. So, we have a quick video. This video demonstrates that as you move your hand closer, your speed increases. And as you move your hands apart, you have a reduced speed. So what basically is happening is you are basically creating or reducing the radius. So angular momentum, what we say MVR that becomes constant. And here, if you have the radius or the distance that is being reduced, the velocity would increase. So if that is the case, in a case of a circle, or let's consider this to be a sector of the river, what would happen on the outer edge? you have more distance to be traveled so the speed should be less however on the inner edge the speed should be higher but in the case of meanders it is not actually seen and that is due to the formation of hydraulic head so angular momentum is one of the concepts but not the only concepts that act in the process of formation of meanders the basic concept here is the formation of hydraulic head. Now let's understand how this happens. You have the river that is going. Now since you have a bank erosion that is started on this surface, you have a constant water that is being pushed off here. And because of the constant pushing of water, you have a hydraulic head that is being created. To demonstrate it further, I have pieces of uh, ice, uh, ice cream sticks. And what we are doing is, we are trying to demonstrate how this change occurs. So initially, this was the stream that hit the surface or the bank. Then you had another stream, another stream and another stream. So since there are one stream after the other hitting the coast, there would be hydraulic head that would be formed. And therefore, the shape of this region would be much steeper as compared to this region. So this region where you have a steeper shape would have higher velocity and more erosion as compared to the other end. To demonstrate and explain it further, let's understand you have two mountains that are going here and you have a river that is passing here. In the normal circumstances, the fastest cell is formed immediately below the, below the water surface. So in the case of a normal mountain range where you have the water that is flowing, assume this to be a three dimensional picture so you will have a better outlook about it. So you would have the fastest cell that would be just below the surface in the center. Now in this case what happens is you would have this river, you have A and B. Now what would happen, this A is the outer edge of the meander. So let's consider this as A and this as B. Now I take a cross section of this. When I take a cross section of this, this becomes vertical and you have a kind of deposition that is seen towards this end. Why this happens is, basically you have the water that was gushing in and since it was gushing in and in and in, you had a hydraulic head that was formed and in this hydraulic head, the actual highest velocity region, so this was high velocity followed by low velocity on the outside, this would tend to shift and this would shift this side and this would be a high velocity cell and the surrounding region would be a low velocity region. So ultimately what would happen is this would be replaced by we could say this and what would happen here is here as you can see the slope is much steeper as compared to this slope and therefore you would have if I can cover this you would see the hydraulic head that would be formed towards this side and uh, towards the vertical side and this would be the region of deposition. Now this could also be understood by means of an elbow. So what I do is 
I just bend my hand and in when I am bending the head, consider the lower bony portion to be the outer extent and maximum erosion would occur on the outer edge because you would have more uh, basically vertical down cutting that would occur. So whatever movement is there, all the force would be acting here and this region you would have slow and gradual depositions that would occur. So that is the basic idea how the process of meandering takes place. Now once you have the meandering that takes place, it basically occurs in a zigzag fashion. So you have a zigzag fashion that is seen and so you have one bend here. So once you have a high velocity uh, hydraulic head that is being formed here, this water would divert here and you would have another bend that would be formed here. You would have water that would divert here and another band formed here. Slowly and gradually you would have a kind of deposition that would be seen along the edges. If this deposition is too, too much you would have a lake that would be separated out and this lake would be known as an oxbow lake or moat lake or we can also say as a dead lake because this does not have any source of incoming water and slowly and gradually it dies off. However, if you have this one end that is being constantly supplied with water but the other end that breaks off from the main stream. So let's say this is being constantly joined by the water but you have another end that separates out from the stream we call this as slope. So these are separate terminologies that are used. So you have meanders, moat lakes which are basically oxbow lakes and then you have slow formation that occurs. Again, when we talk about meanders, you have riffles and pools that are very very important and we have covered those in the further chapters where we have talked about the erosion of the fluvial landforms. Now coming on to the next is the lower or the older age or the uh, age of deposition. Now here as we said in the youth stage you had the idea or basically the uh, vertical corrosion that took place. In the youth stage you had the literal corrosion that took place and finally now the river is in the stage of deposition very tired to carry the load and finally and gradually it starts to deposit whatever it has. So that's what a, a old age person does and similarly what her river does. So now you would have the river that would slow down so all the things, all the debris, all the eroded material that it has been bringing around throughout its journey would now be deposited around. So towards the bank of the rivers you would have formation of levees. In the open areas you would have floodplains that would be formed and where the river is finally meeting the ocean you would have delta formation that would be occurring. And how do we understand this delta formation? Now consider this hand to be a river. Finally this river breaks down into distributaries. So the point where various rivers merge is the tributaries and where they distribute further is the distributaries. Now this river breaks down into smaller streams and within the streams you have the empty regions that would be seen. These empty regions would be the regions of deposition and therefore you have delta formation that occurs. Now delta formation is very very important. The various shapes of the delta and which rivers form which delta. So for an objective question this is very very important. Bird foot delta commonly seen in Mississippi river. So sometimes there is direct match the following question. So various deltas and the name of the rivers you must memorize. Now where are deltas actually formed? Deltas are formed in the region where sedimentation is taking place, where there is no tidal movement, no big lakes, no strong currents and a lot of sediment or uh, basically huge load is coming through the rivers that it has been carrying around. The next topic that we would discuss is the rejuvenation process. Now rejuvenation process takes place in two forms. First is the negative movement and the next is the positive movement. What happens in the negative movement? We call it negative because it is basically inverse of what should happen. So you would have the land that is being uplifted and the uh, sea level that is basically falling down. 
in either of the case you would have the, uh, the slope that would steepen or basically deepen down and active down cutting would be seen as the sea level would go down what would happen naturally when the water was flowing at this level and now it's flowing at this level you would have flood plains that would be formed all around so you would have flood plains that would be formed incised meanders and neck points that would be seen so it would be a kind of graded profile because initially river water was at this level and now water water is at this level so you would have a grading of the channel that would be seen and that's what is known as or is an example of negative movement when we talk about positive movement what would happen this land mass would depress down and the sea level would rise up so that's the basic difference between the positive and the negative movements under the case of river rejuvenation. So when we talk about rejuvenation, it's basically beginning of the youth again. So it's attainment of the new level and once you have a new level that is being attained, the whole cycle of river starts again. So start, the river starts from its youth stage again and finally goes till the stage of old age. Now what are the human aspects of the various landforms that are being formed? The regions where you have delta formation, those are not at all good areas for the port purpose, for trade and commerce, so, so no shipping, no good ports could be seen here. Wherever you have rivers, you would have construction of dams, hydroelectricity power that would be seen and many of the flood plains are being utilized as an agricultural resource. So you would have the agricultural production that would be seen. Freshwater fishing is carried out in many areas and again the most interesting thing is the introduction of political geography into this aspect where many a times river forms the political boundaries. So let's say you have the boundary between the state of Oregon and the state of Washington in United States being formed by a river. Similarly, you have Mekong that separates Laos and the Thailand. You have Yalu River that separates North Korea and South Korea. So rivers also definitely act as political boundaries. So those are some of the major aspects of river that we have tried to understand. In the next class, we will we'll talk about the landforms that are being formed by the action of glaciers or ice. If you have any doubts, you can leave those as comment. Do subscribe to the channel and for Hindi viewers, please go down to the channel Exam Race Hindi. Have a very good day ahead.